Hello to all you fantastic and wonderful people. I hope everybody's fine, well, and having a great day. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Yale YFL01 CCTV unit. This come from Amazon and cost £153 in the UK at the time of recording. Let's jump straight into the video and see if this bad boy is any good. Okay, so it comes in this large branded box and it's very well packed. It's much bigger than I first expected and you're greeted with a few leaflets. One's a discount code, a quick start guide and a mounting template. The camera unit and lights are well protected with several layers of foam and this is fairly chunky, it's much bigger than I expected. Quite heavy as well so it will need mounting properly. It feels like a premium product right out of the box. I think it's made from a cast aluminium with some plastic parts. And then finally, we've got some mounting hardware, a couple of metal hooks, some screws, some wall plugs and washers. Let's get the box out of the way and take a deeper look at this camera then. Okay, so we have the infrared sensor at the bottom. It's white and round, the size of a golf ball. We've got a printed Yale logo just above that and then we've got the camera lens just above the logo, roughly centered. As I mentioned, it's quite heavy and bulky, so it will need mounting properly. Also, a key note here, you will need to add your own power lead. This is very simple to do, but do consult a competent person or an electrician if you're unsure of how to do this yourself. I'm not responsible for any faulty wiring or mistakes made here. Okay then, so the camera has a little bit of movement. It's not brilliant and it is a little restrictive, but we have got some adjustable latches at the back here, which have locking teeth to secure them in place when tightened up. The floodlights fold out as well. They've also got the teeth that lock it into place, which is pretty handy and should keep it focused on where you want it. The movement is maybe a little restrictive here, but as long as it's mounted correctly, you shouldn't have any issues. On the rear of the camera itself, we've got a little speaker. This is for the two-way audio, so you can hear what's going on around the camera and you can also communicate with guests or unwanted guests. The rear mounting plate is circular with two holes for the mounting points and this should just come away so we can connect the wiring in just a minute. When you're ready to connect the wiring, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a three cord power cable with your suitable socket. You're also going to need a flathead and a positive screwdriver. I recommend using a fairly long cable so you don't have any trouble reaching your outlets. Also, I recommend you just tidy up the ends of your wires, which makes fitting as easy as possible. When you're ready, undo the center screw. This is quite a long screw, so it'll take a few turns to undo this, and then you wanna remove the back plate. Be careful, there's a little rubber seal around this which helps keep it water resistant. You don't wanna lose or damage that seal. As you can see here, we've got a yellow and green earth cable, and then we've got a little plastic cluster with our neutral, our ground, and our live. The blue is the neutral, the ground is the yellow and green wire in the center, and the brown wire is our live. You wanna feed the wire in through the rubber grommet at the back of the mounting plate, and you wanna give yourself enough room to maneuver so you can bend the wires and manipulate it into the place that it needs to be. This is pretty simple, it's just as easy as changing a plug. It is the blue wire to the blue wire, the yellow and green in the center to the yellow and green, and then finally the brown wire to the brown wire on the right cluster, and again, just tighten all those down. Just to be clear, a little disclaimer here, if you're not comfortable with electronics or doing this kind of work, make sure you get a competent person or an electrician to do this for you. I'm not responsible for any miswiring or any mistakes made here. It's a shame there's not a little clamp like the similar to what you would get in a plug just to hold that wire in place there. So any yanks on the camera may cause that to pull out, which isn't ideal. But as long as you've got it tightened and secure, it should be pretty good. 
So let's put the unit back together now then. Make sure you don't trap the rubber seal or damage that seal in any way. Otherwise, you may get water issues later down the line. Then we just need to put the big screw back in and tighten that down. And then you want to go ahead and plug in your camera to test it. You should see that we get a little red light underneath the camera lens. That means that the camera is powered on and ready for us to go through the setup process. So now you want to grab your smartphone and scan the QR code. This can be found in the quick start guide. This will take you to the Google and Apple stores where you can install the application. Click on your preferred store. For me, it's Google. Then you want to click install. It's the Yale View HD 1080 camera. As soon as that's installed, go ahead and register. It will prompt you to set up an account. This is for your alert system and your notifications. I'm in the UK, so just quickly register this. You'll be sent a verification code just to confirm you're using your correct email address for your notifications and stuff. Then you'll be brought to the application page where you can set up your device. But we're setting it up via the QR code. We're not going to do the manual process. So again, just use your camera to scan the QR code that's on the side of the camera itself. This will then pair your Wi-Fi to the camera. You'll then need to enter your Wi-Fi credentials. It'll then do a quick sound test and a connection test to make sure that everything's good. And you should be set up and ready to go. This camera only works with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi as well, so just bear that in mind. It doesn't work with 5G Wi-Fi. I'm not going to go too in-depth with this one as the setup process is quite simple. At this point, you should be connected and ready to go, so let's take a look at the application and its features. With this model, it is a 1080p image. We get a two-way talk function. It connects via Wi-Fi. It's got very good motion detection. We've got siren, local or periodic record settings, custom alarm tones, floodlight control, and a reset button. You can also update the device's firmware from here as well, or see the device label in case you need access to the QR code or serial number for customer support or anything like that. Then when normally loading the application, it will automatically refresh the live feed for you. If we go on to the custom tab, we've got everything here from naming the camera down to sharing the device with friends or family. You've also got your floodlight and microphone settings here. But first, we'll take a look at the motion detection and the PIR setting. This is pretty cool. You can set the region to 100%, which has got a very wide coverage. But you can also pull this right back so it just sets off the alarm if something is very close. This can be set to your personal preference, and I think this is pretty cool. Then you can also set the light duration, so you can have it on for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or in my case I'd prefer it only be on for 1 minute. Then we've got the mode tab. This allows us to set it to manual, motion activation, or you can have a dust till dawn setting. I like to have it on motion activation. This next one's really good. It allows you to link it up to your house alarm. So if you have a Yale alarm, then you could link this up or it may even work with other compatible alarms. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I thought it was a nice addition. Also, we've got this customizable siren. This allows you to record a 10 second clip of anything you want, really. If you really wanted to, you could even swear at somebody. I thought that was another nice addition. There are also some more intricate settings like customized encryption. This does something with your audio. I don't know too much about this, so I didn't test this feature out. You've also got your network configuration settings here. And if you press the more tab, we get a few more settings here. We get the infrared light settings, device indicator, device beep, time zone, format, etc. One very cool feature on this page, though, is you can see here we've got camera image flip. This is pretty good because if you're struggling for somewhere to mount the camera and you want to mount it on a ceiling, for example, then you would be able to do that. And although the image would be upside down initially, you do have the option to flip it, which would then bring the image to the correct orientation. Finally, there's some video storage settings and some stream settings. This just allows you to switch between high and standard definition and set schedules. If you really wanted to be fussy, you could even set certain times of the day on particular days of the week. It's really good. 
Overall, I have to say I've been very impressed with the application. It's very user friendly and it's easy to navigate. It's got some very cool features and it works really well. I have had no issues with it whatsoever. It hasn't dropped out the connection or failed in any way. The image quality is also pretty good. In low light, it does look a little grainy, but overall it's pretty good. The colors and the details are fairly accurate. You can also switch between standard and high definition, but to be honest, I don't see much of a benefit in doing this. You don't see any upgrade in the image quality in my opinion. The alarm is also pretty loud. It's definitely audible for the, your neighbors, so in an emergency situation, it would do its job. You can also customize this and record your own clips. The standard siren sounds like your typical siren. I'll leave a demonstration in three, two, one. Yeah, as I said, it'll do its job. We also have a micro SD slot and a reset switch under this top cover here. This just twists off. It does have a little etching which shows you an unlock, but I almost missed this somehow. But yeah, we've got an SD card slot and a reset switch in case you need to reset this for any reason. It doesn't have any rubber seals or anything like that, but it does seem okay. On to my final thoughts then, and we'll take a look at the pros and the cons. We'll do the negatives first. Okay, so the infrared sensor at the bottom, if you mount this on the ceiling and reverse the image, that's all good and well, but the infrared sensor won't be able to track as well as it would as if it was in its regular position. It's quite big and bulky compared to some similarly priced systems and what you would expect in this range for usability, etc. So I do think it's slightly overpriced. You need to do some basic DIY by adding a power cable yourself, which again, some people may prefer to just have it ready to go straight out of the box. There's no channeling for the cable and there's no clamp to hold the cable down securely which isn't a major issue, but if someone was to tug quite hard on the cable or to try and pull the camera off the wall in any instance, then it would likely damage the wiring. My final complaint would be that the movement is slightly restrictive. It doesn't allow you to spin the camera all the way around in 360 degrees, neither does it allow you to do that with the light panels. So I found that the movement was a little restrictive, and there's no pan and zoom, so you would need to take that into consideration when mounting. It's not all bad though, there are some very good features and other good reasons to consider this unit. We'll go through the positives now. The application is free to use and it has a very good user interface. It's very user friendly with everything clearly labeled and directions given. The image quality is of a reasonable standard. It's pretty good. The floodlights are very, very bright. They are also low power drawing and high output, so you get a lot of light for a little power. Application and in the infrared sensor is very responsive and alarms and notifications are swift. Unit itself is built to a high standard. It's compatible with Hey Google and has voice control functions. The two-way audio is also another good feature. It has custom alarm tones and can be linked up to your existing house alarm very good unique features that I like. The device itself is quite big, it stands nine inches tall from the wall. The camera part is three inch squared and it's five inches tall. The floodlights are six inches by four by three. The base is six inch circular and three inches deep. Overall, I would give this camera unit three and a half stars out of five. I would say it's pretty good and ideal for certain circumstances, like large gated driveways, barnyard, large gardens and decking areas and things like that. It wouldn't be as suitable for indoor use or for enclosed areas. Guys, if you found any part of this video helpful or if you enjoyed any part of it at all or you just want to support small creators like myself, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of my future uploads. You can also join our new Discord server and follow me on Instagram. I'll leave links in the description and tags on screen. Thanks to each and every one of you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate that. Till next time, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews, and I'll see you in my next video.